Hello and welcome to the concluding session of um, Econ 214, part two of hypothesis testing. In this session, we'll discuss test of hypothesis for a single population proportion, test of test for the difference between two population means, uh, two, and then the difference between two population proportion, and test of hypothesis for small samples using the student's T distribution. This is the outline. We'll test for the proportion, the difference between two means, the difference between two uh, proportions, and then uh, test for sample sizes that are small using the T distribution. Test of the proportion. Now you recall that the proportion is a fraction or percentage that indicates the part of the population or sample having a particular characteristic or trait. So for a sample proportion P, it is X over N, where X is the number of successes in the sample, and N is the sample size. We can test hypothesis concerning the population proportion. Now, to test for the proportion, we apply the same five steps. You state the hypothesis, choose the significance level, set the decision rule, calculate the test statistic, and make a decision. The test statistic for the proportion, you are familiar with it, you do the Z, you calculate the Z as follows, where P is the sample proportion and pi is the population proportion, and the RN is the sample size. Let's take a very simple example. We want to test the hypothesis of pi equals 0 0.5 versus uh, pi not equal to 0 0.5. In other words, it's about tossing, uh, testing whether a coin is fair or not, right? You know from our discussion of probability that a fair coin has the, the probability of a head is 0.5 and that of a tail is 0.5. So the probability of either side is 0.5. If we want to test this at 5%, it means our critical value will be 1.96 because it is two tilled. And then we'll reject the, the null if the absolute value of our Z, which is the test statistic that we're going to compute soon, is greater than 1.96. So this is the formula for the test statistic and then we can substitute the values in it. But let's say that the experiment we conducted, tossing a coin 100 times, we observe heads 60 times. So it means that our sample proportion is 0.6, right? So we will, call, we will compute our Z, or the test statistic, as this, and we obtain 2. Since 2 is greater than 1.9, we will just reject the null and say that the coin is not a fair coin. If it were, we shouldn't be rejecting the null hypothesis. Let's move on straight away to look at the difference of two pop population means. Now again, the same five steps apply in testing for the difference of two means. So this is how you state the hypothesis. Now, there are two means. We want to test whether the two means are equal or not. So you can write your null as mu1 equals mu2, or you can write it as mu1 minus mu2 equals 0, because if they are e indeed equal, the, the difference should be 0, right? So mu1 is the mean from the first population, and mu2 is the mean from the second population. Now, once you state your hypothesis and then determine your decision rule based on the chosen level of significance, then you compute the test statistic as this. Now, note that in this formula, what you will be given is the sample means for the first, um, for, for the first and second samples, right? But the mu1 minus mu2 essentially goes to zero. So in some cases, you don't even have to report it. All right? And then the denominator is this formula, where S1 squared 
is this sample variance uh, from the first sample and then S2 squared is a variance from the second sample. N1 is the sample size 1 and then N2 is sample size 2. Now, the definitions are not here because we previously discussed that if you see uh, session 9 slides, you see the definitions. So let's take an example. A study compared the mean years of service for those retiring in 2009 with those retiring in 2010 at a large company. At the 1% significance level, can we conclude that the workers retiring in 2010 gave more service based on the following sample data? So this is the information. Now we want to call the um, 2010 as the population one. So we've given that. So the sample means are 25.6 years and 30.4 years respectively. The sample standard deviations are 2.9 and 3.6 and the sample sizes are 40 and 45 respectively. So all we need to do is to state the hypothesis, okay? Now the hypothesis says that mu1 is less than or equal to mu2. So either it means that they, uh, either 2000 and 10 give the same or less compared to 2010. The alternative will be 2010 being greater than 2009, right? So mu1 greater than mu2. Now, given alpha of 0.01, the z critical should be 2.33. And I'm asking why. You should know why by now, right? So we will reject HO if these test statistic is greater than 2.33. Now, given the information we have, substituting it into the formula, we obtain our z to be 6.8. So because our z, 6.8, is greater than our criticals of 2.33, we reject the null hypothesis. And the interpretation is that those retiring in 2010 had more years of service. Okay, now if you look at the data, the mean actually for 2010 is greater, but you, don't, you do not act, you just conclude on the basis of that, okay? The 30.4 could have been due to sampling variation. So that's why we needed to uh, go through the procedure and their decision was upheld. Now let's move on to look at testing the difference of two population. Again, we are applying the same principles. Well, what is important is to know how the hypothesis are stated. And this is how you state the null and then the alternative. Okay? And then this is your test statistic. That's the formula. Where pi hat is obtained as the weighted average of the two sample proportions that's how it is so you obtain your uh, the the pi hat as the weighted average of the two sample proportions so this is one way in which you can compute the pi this is an alternative way because in reality n1 times p1 is equal to x1 right and n2 times p2 is equal to x2. Okay, so let's take an example. Now we want to pose this question. Are unmarried workers more likely to be absent from work than married workers? A sample of 250 married workers showed 22 missed more than five days last year, while a sample of 300 unmarried workers showed 35 missed more than five days. So we want to test using the 5% level of significance. Okay, so we want to make um, the unmarried workers population one. So we state our, our null and our alternative as this. Given the significance level, our Z is 1.64 or 1.65, or you could also use the average 1.645. So we'll reject the null if Z were greater than 1.645. Now, we compute 
are pi hat. It is 0 0.1036. And now obtain our z as 1.1. Now, this z of 1.1 is less than 1.645. So the null is not rejected. And the conclusion is that there is no difference in the proportion of married and unmarried workers missing more than five days of work. Another way is to use the p-value approach, okay, and where the p-value is greater than the significance level, so we do not reject. Now, let's conclude our discussion by looking at tests for small samples using the student's t. Now, we've already discussed the student's t distribution. We said that it is used in situations where the sample size is small and the population standard deviation is unknown. And the test statistic, as we indicated, will be this sample mean minus population mean divided by sample standard deviation over square root of n. Okay, so this is the example uh, we want to work out. The current rate for producing 5 amp fuses Okay, so the problem, I will not dwell on it. You can read the problem. But what is important is that we're able to state a null and hi alternative hypothesis. Okay, now at the 5% significant levels and with n minus 1 degrees of freedom, which is 9, we can read the critical value as 1.8331. Okay, so it is re read similar to what we did when we um, discussed uh, confidence interval. But this time you read for a one-tailed test. It is illustrated in the table as such. So we will reject the null hypothesis if our test statistic that we will compute is greater than 1.8338. Now, our T computed is actually 3.16 based on the data from the question. So, HO is rejected. What it means is that the new machine actually is working faster, okay? It's faster. And as I indicated, you use the table, okay? You use your one tilt test and the alpha being. 0 0.05 and then 9 degrees of freedom and read the value as such. Now I would expect you at this point to solve all the problem sets that will be um, put at the course website because it is um, said that practice makes perfect. Uh, this is where we bring our discussion. I wish you all the best in the course. Thank you very much. Bye-bye. <laughs>